Hi guys, welcome back. Today in RAS Weekends, we're going to be going through all the reforms for RTR Imperium Serectum version 0.6 for the Hellenistic and Greek factions. A lot has changed, a lot of new reforms have come in, and a lot of different tiered reforms have come in as well. It's not just all single reforms for factions, and it adds a lot into the game. So we're going to be going through the reform triggers, the description and the reason behind the reform as well, the artwork of the reform and the units that you'll get. Now in the background you'll see a cheeky little battle going on, a big AI battle. Uh, that is there for extra visuals but I'll bring all the extra visuals in on top of everything as well so you'll see the UI artwork, you'll see the units and you will see uh, the reform triggers and their location, all that sort of thing as well. But without further ado, let's get into the Achaean League. Now the Achaean League, guys, has three different reforms. So let's start with Achaean League 1, and its description is as follows. Just a note on the description, guys. Uh, they are written, a lot of them, as dialogues between people. So I will try and read out the main body and not the second part of the dialogue, the, uh, the comeback in the dialogue, because it would just not make sense to you guys unless I was doing different voices. Which I'm not quite prepared to do for this one, guys. Not yet, anyway. Um, so let's talk about the description of Achaean League Reform 1. Aratos of Sikion had found the mercenary forces of the Achaeans disaffected and the cities not at all disposed to tax themselves for the purpose of maintaining them. However, he made an appeal to the Achaeans and obtaining a decree on the subject, occupied himself actively with preparations for war. The substance of the decree was as follows. They were to keep up a mercenary force of 8,000 foot and 500 horse, and a picked epileptoi Achaean force of 3,000 foot and 300 horse, including 500 foot and 50 horses from Megalopolis, all brazen shielded and an equal number of Argives. That is from Polybius as well and Achaean League 1 reform is triggered by fighting 25 battles so that's all you need to do guys is fight 25 battles and you will get this reform and the units that you get with it are the Achaean Thorakitai, the Megalopolitan Chalcospides and the Argive Epilectoi so you get some really good units with this reform so let's also talk about Achaean reform number Two. So the description for this one, of course, is Assembly of the Honourable Achaean Koinon. Hear me. Hear me. Dear Achaeans, I know you have fought hard these past few years. You have defended your homes. You have marched into foreign lands. You have been starved, borne incredible heat and scaled great heights. Yet, we can still improve our army. It is time to strengthen our infantry by giving the Theroporoi better armor and by introducing the Macedonian phalanx. But there is more. Our horsemen have to learn how to ride and fight, and our Phoebes have to be educated with the bow by Cretan experts. I know this will cost a huge effort and a lot of money, but this is the way forward for Achaea. To survive and thrive, we need to melt our jewels and silver tableware and create armor and weapons so yeah the Achaean League number two of course talking a lot about the horsemen and the new soldiers so with this one it's a bit of a longer term one you've got to control 15 settlements and at least be at turn 65 so you need to be 65 turns into the game to get this one and you do get a lot of troops you get the Achaean Theroporoi which replaced the foreign Theroporoi the Neocretan Ephibes as well the Epilectoi uh, Phalangites, uh, which I believe replaced the Achaean Epilectoi. The Achaean uh, Phalangites as well. And the Achaean Zistophoroi late, which replaced your Zistophoroi early, of course. So a really good reform gives you a lot of good units with this reform, guys. So it's something that you want to make sure you're at. You want to make sure you're at 15 settlements by turn 65 definitely so you can get this straight away when you get there so let's talk about Achaean reform number three and it simply is reach huge city so you've just got to have one huge city for this reform and it is the description of this one is we have bought aspis shields to equip our horsemen with them any objections and there are no objections and it is simply 
gives you an Espido 4 eye unit. So a heavier uh, horseman unit that has a shield rather than your Zista 4 eye that only have the Ziston, I believe it's called, the large spear. So with that one, reach huge city and you get Zista 4 eye, which is a great, great reform. So remember, guys, with all these reforms, some of them are going to be really impactful, like the Achaean ones. But some of the others, maybe say, like, if we look at some of the others, uh, the Aetolians, which we're going to go on to next, maybe less impactful on the roster. So depending on the nation you play, you might want to rush for reforms, or you might not be bothered at all, depending on what you're going to get from them. So just adjust your gameplay based on that as well. So let's move on to the Aetolian League, guys. So the Aetolians have two reforms, and the first one of the Aetolian reforms is as follows. The Aetolian Assembly has assembled to discuss a proposal by the Caledonian. Brave men of Aetolia, we know you are the boldest warriors and best men of Greece. Yet, ahem, we suggest an improvement for our army. We brought with us new armor from Macedon, including Galatian chainmail and shiny new Aspis shields that can be held by the rider of a horse. Allow us to equip our soldiers with these items and we will be invincible. So with this one, with the Aetolian League uh, number one, all you have to do is reach huge city. Again, so a nice simple one for you to do. And with that, you get, like it says in the description, some Aetolian Thorakitai and the Espido Foroi as well. Just those two units, but both very, very powerful units. So a good one to get early on. So let's move on to the Aetolian League reforms. Number two, the last reforms. So here's the description. Assembly of Aetolia, welcome the envoy of Knossos. The people and the council of the Knossian thanks you, men of Aetolia, for your friendship and support. We have come to pay our debts. These young men here are some of our most talented up-and-coming archers. They will join your ranks and train your Ephebes how to use the bow like Apollo himself. So with this reform, all the trigger is, is to take one settlement on Crete. That's all you need to do, guys. And you will get access at that point to the Neo-Cretan archers. So if you want really powerful early game archers, I would rush for that because the Neo-Cretan archers are very good. And it's a very simple requirement to get this reformed. So let's move on to the Antigonids, guys. So the Antigonids have two different reforms, guys. And reform one goes as follows. Hail Vesalius. In recent years, our army has been strengthened by ferocious mercenaries from a wide variety of foreign peoples. Some of them, such as the Trollians, have even been enlisted in your royal guard. These developments have resulted in our adopting new military strategies and equipment, which are represented through a number of reform units that have now become available for recruitment. So with this one, all you need to do, the trigger for Antigonids 1, is to reach a huge city once again. And with this, you get the Espido Foroi, so those cavalry units we were talking about, the Lucas Fides, which is a phalangite unit, and the Tralian Infantry. So let's move on to... Antigonids 2. So Antigonids 2 goes as follows. Hail Basilius. Over the last decades, we have faced numerous enemies in battle. Unfortunately, not always with the great success that might be expected from the only true heirs of the great Alexander. Now, however, our engineers have come up with a brilliant new weapon that will surely allow to try and turn the tides of war into our favor. The Kestros Sling. Some of our light infantry have already already been equipped with this dangerous new weapon. So with this one, the trigger for this one is to be at turn 100 and to have had had 50 battles fought already. And with that, you get the Kestros Slingers. So like you can see, guys, with some of the factions, you want to be at the point of trigger in the reform when you get to the turn that it says... And you also, you know, you might want to prioritize some of the reforms over the others as well. And that's what this video is here for, guys. You can use it to, uh, to decide which reforms you want to go for and how you're going to get there as well. So let's move on to the glorious nation of Athens. So Athens has two reforms as well, guys. And the first reform is as follows. Honorable Acontes and Demos of Athens. 
we, the Stratohoi, propose to equip some of our soldiers with the Oval Thurios Shield. It is a large and cheap to produce shield, cheaper than the Aspis, so more men can fight and no extra tax is needed. So with this reform, all you need to do, guys, it's a pretty easy one, is to control 10 settlements. And with that, you get your Theroperoi eventually, so you can replace some of your Hoplites with the new Theroperoi. So on to reform number two, and with that one, we have the following description. Dear people of Athens, hear me out. I know that you love your coins, but today you have to part with some of your drachmae, for we can strengthen our armies. Please, Athenians, we could use round shields to equip two different regiments of horsemen with them. So with this one, all you need to do is reach huge city as well. And you do get those two regiments of horsemen, like we've just said, the Espidophoroi and the Tarantine Cavalry. So with Athens, not a huge amount of troops you get, but your main cavalry body comes after the reforms. So you really want to try and get Athens up to being a huge city as early as possible. But let's move on to one of my favorite nations in Bactria. So Bactria only has one reform, guys, but it is quite a big one, and it goes as follows. Hail, Bisalius! Together with our independence from the Seleucid Empire and the migration of Greek and Macedonian military settlers has also come to an end. If we want to survive, we have to rely on the natives to bolster the ranks of our army. Its true core and elite, however, will always continue to be made up of the Epigonoi, literally meaning offsprings or sons of the proud Greeks originally settled here by Alexander and Seleucos. Years have passed since the revolt in the late 3rd century BC. The Epigonoi have by now slowly come to replace your regular Hellenistic units. So here, the reform is really quite big and the trigger is be at at least turn 50, so I've had 50 turns, and to conquer 20 settlements, guys. So unlike Athens, where it is control 10 settlements, that's just control, so the ones at the start count, with Bactria, you have to conquer 20 additional settlements to the ones you start with. So do bear that in mind. Don't be confused when you have only 20 settlements and you've not uh, had the reforms. You've got to conquer 20. And with that, this reform removes the Bactrian Chalcospedes and the Zistophore and the Bactrian General, but it replaces it with the Epigonoi Hypastis, the Epigonoi Hetairoi, so the Companion Cav, the Epigonoi Phalangites, the Bactrian Cataphracts, oh baby, and the Bactrian Late General, which is a very strong general as well. So this reform, you really want to make sure you've conquered 20 settlements by the time you get to turn 50 as Bactria, because this is really, really going to bolster your army significantly. So guys, let's move on to Bithynia. So guys, Bithynia only has one reforms, and the description is as follows. Hail, Bessalius! Your people wish you well. All is well with us. The gods favor Bithynia. You have established an impressive kingdom, and your deeds will not be forgotten. But the time has come to improve our army even further, so that we may stop the Syrian monarchs to, and get rid of the pesky Attalids to our south. Our weaponsmiths recommend adopting the Celtic Thurios shield, which is larger and wider than most of the shields we have used thus far, Greek or Thracian. We will equip some of the hoplites as light infantry bearing these big shields, spears and javelins, and they shall be called Theropora. They are now available for recruitment. So with this reform, guys, all you have to do is own 20 settlements. So again, controlling those 20 settlements. So that's a really good goal for you to go for early game, because I would suggest you want to get this reform as quick as possible, because you get the uh, Bithynian Theroperoi, the Bithynian Epibarti, the Marines, which are not, you know, amazing units, but they're decent. But it's for the third unit that you get that I would suggest you want to go for this one. The Bithynian Royal Peltas. We have seen them in the roster video. They are an absolutely beastly unit, boys. So get those guys as quick as possible. Try and get your 20 plus settlement as quick as possible. So let's move on to the Boeotian League, guys. So the Boeotian League has 
two uh, reforms again, guys. So back to the two reforms. And we'll start with number one. Stratohoi, Boeotians, hear us. Hear us, hear us. We know you have heard about defeats, but Boeotia is strong and we have a solution. We will reform our army after the model of the Macedonians. Professional elite units and phalangites will march for our koinon and march to victory. So the Boeotian League number one is to fight 20 battles, guys. So all you need to do is fight 20 battles. And after that, you're going to get some very good units. You're going to get the Peltophoroi, the Agima of the Peltophoroi, and the Epilectoi. All three very, very nice units, especially the Agima and the Epilectoi. So something you want to do, go and fight some battles and you'll get these reforms. But on to reform number two. And we have the following description. We have seen the Macedonians use Aspis shields for their cavalry. The large round shield affords horsemen the ideal protection and armed with copus and spear, they will be unstoppable in melee. Or they will cost not too much. We already have many Aspis shields from our hoplites and the same goes for spears and copus swords. We can produce the necessary linothoraces easily. One linothorax can be produced for as little as 24 drachmae after the Athenian method. So with this one, uh, Boeotian League number two, all you have to do is get to huge city, guys. And again, you get the Espidophori, your best cavalry option. So a good one to go for as well, because the Espidophori, like I say, are a good unit overall. And you're going to need that cavalry going into the late game. So let's move on to the Bosporan Kingdom, my friends, the Bosporans. So the Bosporan Kingdom actually has three reforms again, and the first reform is as follows. Hail, Archon of Panticapion, and Phanagorea, and Basilius of the Chimerian Bosporus. Thanks for all those words, by the way. <laughs> A military innovation has occurred in your realm. Our horsemen have tested the oval Celtic shield, and they are pleased with the results. You may now recruit new cavalry units equipped with the Thurios from the Royal Barracks. May Heracles lead us to victory. Make sure to check the recruitment scroll, of course. But yeah, Bosporans. Uh, yeah, those words, very easy for me to say, of course. Um, but yeah, um, the first reform is to reach huge city, guys, and you get the Theroporoi. Cavalry. So, on to the reform number two, which might be a little bit stronger for you. Hail Stratohos! Over time, our soldiers have encountered and slain many foes. This has also resulted in adopting new military strategies and equipment that are represented through a number of reformed units that have now become available for recruitment, of course. So with this Bosporan number two, you've got to fight 30 battles, and that's it. Just fight 30 battles, and you'll get access to the Sarmatian Cataphracts, yes, Sarmatian Cataphracts are a really good one for you to try and go for early, early on. Try and fight 30 battles and get the big boys on the battlefield as quick as possible. So on to reform number three, which is a little bit of a more long-term one. Hail, Basileus, Stratahos, Autokrato, and Archon of the Greek cities on the Bosporus. You have led our men from victory to victory. And now, finally, the Black Sea yields when you speak. From beyond the great waves, military innovations have found their way into our land, and our melee infantry has been improved to fight ever more competently against those who cast covetous eyes on our rich lands. You may now recruit these men and lead us to yet another famous triumph. But with this one, guys, it is a long-term one. You've got to get three huge cities to trigger this one, guys. And you get the Bosporan Heavy Infantry, which is a really strong, late-game, heavy infantry unit. Of course, if you want to see any of these units I'm talking about, guys, you can check all the unit roster videos down in the description below and you can find out all about these units and their stats as well so check those videos out if you are wondering what these units entail and what they're going to be like on the battlefield so let's move across a long way away down into north africa to kyrene 
So guys, Kyrene has two sets of reforms, and the first one is as follows. Mighty Basilius, Autocrator of Kyrene, we praise you. Under the guidance of Zeus himself, you have established ourselves among the great realms of the world. The time has come to expand our phalanx, and we have therefore decided to admit Libyans into these regiments, since the number of Greeks and Macedonians in Africa does not suffice. Additionally, we have adopted the big oval Thurios shield from our Galatian mercenaries. Use these new weapons and units wisely. So with the first one, all you have to do, guys, is control 15 settlements. So it's not conquer 15 settlements with this one. Again, it's control 15, so including the ones you start with. And with that one, you get the Libyan phalangite and the Theroperoid. So a Libyan phalangite. There's a bit more available than your other phalangites and the Theroperoid unit as well to replace your hoplites. So on to Kyrene number two. So with Kyrene number two, the description is as follows. Mighty Basilius, Autocrater of Kyrene, by Zeus be praised. We have led us, you have led us to many a victory like a true Hellenic hero. Now that our kingdom has grown to such an impressive size, we have enough money to set up two elite regiments with richly decorated armor and helmets. After the example of Alexander's Hypastists and Agira Spides, Phalanx and Hoplite-like elite regiments, are now available for recruitment. So with this one, you have to fight 25 battles against the Ptolemies, guys. So it's not 25 battles against anyone. It is 25 battles specifically against the Ptolemies in order to get the Chironian Hypastis and the Agema Phalangite. So two very elite units. So something you want to do very quickly. And I would suggest... This will go hand in hand with the controlling 15 settlements. So try and go do those two together and you'll be instantly uh, powerful, uh, more powerful in pretty short space of time if you manage to do these two pretty similar together. And it also kind of forces you into fighting the Ptolemies. So don't leave the Ptolemies until they're destroyed because you're never going to get this, guys. But do it early on. And the Ptolemies have so many settlements that it shouldn't be a problem to find 25 battles to fight against them but let's move on to Epirus guys so Epirus actually has a pretty decent early game roster guys so they only get one unit from the reforms and they only get one reform and it is as follows hail Basilius over time our soldiers have encountered and slain many foes among the barbarians we faced in Italy we found cavalrymen hiding behind shields even if this practice was initially regarded as pure cowardice by our brave and noble warriors, over time we have come to see the merits of equipping our horsemen with an aspis of their own. These new military strategies are represented by the Espido Fore, who have now become available for recruitment. So with this one, all you need to do is reach huge city, guys. So just reach huge city and you will get that Espido Fore unit. So a smaller reform... For Epirus. So once you start as Epirus, guys, you know that's pretty much the, the unit roster you're going to have, apart from AOR units that you'll be able to recruit on Conquering Settlement. So bear that in mind when you're playing as Epirus. So let's move on to Massalia. So the Massalians get two different reforms, guys, and the first one is as follows. Hear me, assembly of the 600 noblest men of Massalia. We are proud Massaliotes, much more elegant, intelligent, and controlled than those barbaric Celts and Ligurians. Yet, in order to defend ourselves, we should adopt their big oval shield, the Thurius. So with the uh, first reform, all you have to do is fight 10 battles, guys, and you get Theroperoi and Theroperoi cavalry, so those big Thurios shields. We can see a common theme, can't we, guys? Getting that Thurios shield as part of the reforms. But on to reform number two. Noble 600 of Massalia. Again, we present you the new armor we have bought for our troops. Breastplates, Gallic chainmail, and metal reinforced Linothorakes. Our proud merchants have acquired these items to equip our Theroperoi as Thorakitai. But they need to be reimbursed. Therefore, we ask for liturgia. Your money for the defense of Massalia. 
So yeah, with this reform, guys, you all only need to control 15 settlements. So again, it's another control, not conquer. So you need to control 15 settlements. And with that, you get the Masalio Thorakitai, which I would suggest is pretty much... Uh, necessary to do well in that region against those enemies because the Celts, like we know guys, have very strong rosters. So make sure you do this as quick as possible and get recruiting that Thorakitai pretty quickly as soon as you can after the reforms. So let's move on to uh, many a fan favourite, which is Pergamon. So guys, Pergamon has two different reforms, one a lot stronger than the other. But Pergamon reform number one goes like this. Basilios, your friends greet you. By Athena, you have done well to consolidate our kingdom. Our borders are now not just bound by the Kaikos River below Pergamon, but many of the Mycians also stand under your control. Accordingly, we have integrated light Mycian infantry into our army. They are now ready to be recruited from cities across the kingdom. So with this reform, all you have to do is be at war with the Seleucids and have a total of 30 units, which I would suggest is a pretty easy thing to do early game. So have total 30 units and you will get the Mycenaean archers and the Mycenaean javeliniers. Javeliniers? Javeliners! Javeliniers! Um, but with that one, you know, the Mycenaeans aren't fantastic. So it's not so strong. And it's also, you know, 30 units is not too bad to get either. So it's quite an easy one. And that's reflected in the units that you get as well. So on to number two. Basilius, your friends greet you once again. How far we have come. When Athena raises her eyes to look across your realm, she sees bountiful valleys, bustling ports, mighty fortresses and flourishing cities. Many of the inhabitants of this kingdom are Mycenaeans, and they have now adopted the equipment of our neighbours, the Seleucids. At the same time, we have created a new regiment of royal pikemen, the Agima, to further strengthen our forces. This new model army will be unstoppable, and your glory will stretch to the ends of Asia. Well, I guess that's up to you guys, isn't it? But yeah, Pergamon Reform 2, you have to control... 25 settlements so obviously pergamon doesn't start with many at the start so you've got to get quite a bit bigger so more of a long-term one but when you do get it you get some really good units you get the mycenaean theroperoi the agima phalangites so your elite phalangites the mycenaean cavalry the thorakitai another very strong unit and the espido foroi so a really good reform for you there guys so make sure you try and get that one as quick as possible but let's move on to the nation no one wants to play as. I don't want to play as Pontus. So guys, Pontus actually has some really interesting reforms here. Some of them very strong, some of them slightly less strong. But yeah, some really good ones here and really cool ones as well. So let's go with Pontus number one. Reform one. Mighty Lord of Cappadocia on the Pontus, Mithras praises you. And now that you have shown the Greeks on the coast of the Pontus Euxinos how powerful you are, the production of warships has begun. Our fleet has steadily grown and we have come to a point where we have decided to hire specialist soldiers who can fight aboard our triremes and penteres. Allow me to introduce, introduce this band of Galatians. They are brave and strong like all Gauls, but I have been assured that they do not fear the water and the waves. So with this one, with number one, all you have to do is own 10 ships, guys, and you get the Galatopontic Epibati, a fantastic-looking unit. Not so good on the stats, but a fantastic-looking Epibati unit. Nonetheless, really cool with their bronze helms. So check those boys out. But yeah, Cool uh, cool little reform if you get the 10 ships, which makes sense for you to get your Epibati at that point, doesn't it? But on to reform number two, and this one is a little bit stronger. So on to this one. Let Zeus and Mithras attest how splendidly you have led our kingdom, how great our wealth has become, and how strong our army. We have followed your latest instructions and implemented the training of the terrible Macedonian phalanx, which has hurt us so profoundly in the past. 
No longer will Macedonian pikes defeat Pontic bravery. For now, both former slaves and men born free will be able to fight back as phalangites themselves. Additionally, a new royal guard has been formed, which will make you proud. It is the hypastis of the demigod Alexander reborn. So yeah, this is a really strong reform, guys. And with this one, you have to control 25 settlements. So a pretty long-term one as well, a mid-game one. But with it, you get the freedmen phalangites. That is the slaves, of course, being phalangites. The pontic guards, which is a great unit. The chalcus speeders. The pontic hetairoi, the companion cav of Pontus. The Pontus, Pontic General's Bodyguard Late, which is a really strong general. The Pontic Thorakitai and the Pontic Aspidophoroi. So honestly, a really strong reform once you control those 25 settlements. And now the last one is a really interesting one. And the first one that we've seen of this so far. Mighty Basilius, ruler of the land, mightiest of all the men in Mother Asia. By Kabile and Athena, your greatness knows no bounds. The poets are already writing verses about your great victory against the Western barbarians. At the same time, our best engineers and officers have worked hard to reproduce the shiny armor of the Romaioi. The Romaioi. <laughs> yeah, I think that's how you pronounce it. Romaioi, <laughs> you spoke about. New troops that are equipped exactly like our forces are now available for recruitment and will ram home our advantage, which is Pontic Courage. Yeah, so <laughs> I was just laughing because of my horrible pronunciation once again, guys. I wasn't laughing at the description, but yeah. Um, with this one, very unique. You've got to fight five battles against Rome, guys. So either you've got to go and find Rome and fight them, or they will have expanded through Greece by this point. And with that, you get imitation legionaries. So a really, really good reform because you get your imitation legionary boyos, which are a pretty strong unit, I've got to say. So let's move on to the Ptolemies, who have some really interesting reforms. Really, really cool. So the Ptolemies have some really interesting reforms here, guys. And we're getting into all the big boys now. So you have been waiting for the right moment uh, for all these big factions. And the first reforms is really cool. So, hail Pharaoh. Macedonian and Greek manpower is hard to come by. And the everlasting war against the Seleucids and our own rebellious subjects is draining our small pool of true Helenas. Fortunately, the local Egyptian population is swelling, and they are eager to fight. If we provide them with a small plot of land to sustain themselves and train them in our superior Macedonian tradition, we can draft thousands of these Machimoi warriors into our army. These men are willing to die for you and for the Ptolemaic Empire. The bravest might even form Epilectoi regiments and could guard our court. Beware, though that they do not get too powerful, as rumours of the local strive for independence has been snuffed out within the ranks of these, re uh, these new recruits. So, of course, uh, this is related to the Egyptian revolt as well, but uh, we will do a full video on that when it comes to it, guys. Um, so, yeah, this reform is actually related to that in an in a, uh, interesting way, but we'll get to that when we get to the Egyptian revolt video where I'll show you how to trigger it or how not to trigger it if you don't want to trigger it as well. Um, so with Reform 1, you've got to reach a large city in a native Egyptian culture settlement. So it's a settlement that has the native Egyptian culture as its culture. It can be converted, I believe, to a different culture, so Greek if you're the Ptolemies, but it has to have that native Egyptian as a building in the building tab. So check that uh, for that when you want to trigger these reforms and with that you get the Machimoi phalangites which is the egyptian phalangites and the Machimoi epilectoi the egyptian sort of elite the egyptian heroes um in the army as well which is really cool so on to reform number two which is really really uh, cool not a description for it just yet but it will be added i believe some point soon so what you have to do for the trigger of this one is you've got to have triggered reform one already and you've got to defeat the egyptian 
revolt. So again, linked in with the Egyptian revolt, you can see that linked in to the Ptolemaic gameplay for version 0.6 throughout the whole game. So make sure you've triggered 0.1. And also the Egyptian revolt needs to trigger and you need to defeat them. And you get the Machimoy Hippias and the Machimoy Swordsman, which is really cool. So some better Machimoy regiments there uh, as well. So on to number three. So Hail Pharaoh. Following the reforms of Polycrates, our Therapeia Guard cavalry has been retrained to become more efficient in battle. They have also been re-equipped with sturdy bronze muscle cuirasses and plumed helmets. A wonderful sight to behold. So you've got to recruit 10 Therapeia Cavalry, which is the sort of early general's bodyguard. So you've got to recruit 10 generals or 10 of the Therapeia Cavalry. And with that, what you will get is the Neocretan Archer, so your best archer option. The Thoracitae, again, a brilliant option. The Ptolemaic Peltophore, again, another fantastic option. And the late bodyguard for the Ptolemies as well, the late Therapeia Cavalry, which is really cool. So these reforms are very interesting and very unique, and I love, love, love them. So, on to Rhodes, guys. On to the Rhodian boy. So with Rhodes, you have two separate reforms and not as strong as some of the other reforms we've seen, but you do get a good unit in there as well. So reform one, greetings, Stratahos. Warfare behind beyond, behind, 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 beyond our Rhodian shore has changed and it is time to adapt. A new large and oval shaped shield has spread through Hellas and Asia. Its lightness makes it suitable for skirmishing, but its size will also protect its bearer in a close formation. We should definitely make use of it on the battlefield. So as you can guess, with reform number one, you get the Theroparoi, <laughs> which would make perfect sense after that description, guys. But you've got to have five cities with minimum size of three. So that means you've got to have five minor cities, guys, as roads to get these reforms. So you're either going to have to go over to Crete, start expanding, or into the mainland to get these reforms. So it really pushes you into expansion. So on to reform number two. Demas and Bool of the Rhodians, hear us out. We bring Aspis shields from Greece to be carried by cavalry. The time has come for our hoplites to fight from horseback as other Greeks are now doing. We must move with the time. Rhodes is always at the forefront of change and innovation. I recommend to adopt the reform. So with this one, all you need to do is get a city to huge city. And I would recommend Rhodes for that task because Rhodes already starts, I believe, as a minor city and it has some good population growth and lots and lots of trade, boys. It is a very rich city. And with this, you get the Espido Foroi. So back to the Espido Foroi for the Rhodians, your best cavalry option without AOR units, of course, for Rhodes. So go for that huge city as quick as possible, I would say. So now on to my personal favorite faction, guys, the big Seleucid Empire. So the Seleucids also have some very interesting reforms, as you should expect with these big nations. So the reform number one goes as follows. Greetings, mighty Basileus. May you live long and prosper, Agatha Tyche. Our Macedonian soldiers are the best in the world, sons of the divine Heracles themselves, worthy of Alexander the Demigod. Yet sometimes us mortals have to change. And it seems that now a new type of armor has become available, which will protect the thorax of our soldiers. Allow us to retrain our men to fight as Thoracitae, and you will see how effective our Greek armor is. Long live the dynasty of Seleucos. And I can't agree more. Long live the dynasty of Seleucos. And with that one, you all you have to do is recruit mercenaries 15 times, guys, and the reform number one will trigger. So a very easy one to do. And with it, you get some really good, really good units. You get the Thoracitae, the Neocretan Archers, the Crisis Speeders, which uh, is another good unit, and the Late Body. Well, the Crisis Speeders is a little bit, not, not quite as good. Um, it's a more lower tier Phalangite. But the Late Bodyguard as well, which is a fantastic unit. And the Thoracitae, of course, and your Neocretan Archers. Really good units there. Three really good units. 
and yeah, really cool indeed. And probably something that you might want to rush pretty quickly early on the game to get that Thoracitae and late bodyguard because you'll shred people with that. And of course the Neocretan archers, which are so much better than the standard Greek archers. So on to number two uh, reform which is here. Hail Basilius, we are well and hope to find you well. A storm from the east has ravaged our lands. The barbarians our philosophers call Parnoi have ruthlessly attacked our cities, stolen our cattle, and enslaved good Greek citizens. But there is good news. Zeus Olympios has led our, your generals to victory. They have learnt that the enemy uses a cavalry clad in metal plates, which we now call cataphractoi. It seems sensible to copy this style of fighting. So if you agree, mighty king, you may now recruit your own regiment of these beasts now. So that is a fantastic reform because as you can guess, it gives you the cataphracts, the Seleucid cataphracts. And again, it's a relatively good one to get early game because all you have to do is fight five battles against Parthia, which I would suggest is something that's going to happen pretty early on uh, if you want to go and take out Parthia. You may not win or lose the battle. You may not win the battles, guys. Uh, but if you do do the battles, you're going to get five. Uh, you're going to get the cataphracts, which is fantastic. So on to reform number three. Number three? Number three. Uh, praise you, Basilios, with good wishes from your people, Agatha Tyche. The barbarians who call themselves Romaioi are ever expanding their realm. They are now threatening your grand kingdom, and the time has come to counter their endless swordsmen with a new weapon. 5,000 of our Agira speeders have been rearmed with chainmail shirts, the big oval shields of the barbarians, straight swords and javelins. In difference to the Romaioi, they are professional soldiers, and they will cut through them like a Ziphos through hot Syrian butter. King Seleucos be praised. So this one, you can guess, is related to the Romans. So you've got to fight five battles with the Romans, and... So note this, guys, and Rome has conquered at least five settlements in Greece. So it does depend a little bit on the Romans... And with this one, you get the late Agira Speeders. So the Agira Speeders reform swordsmen, which are an incredibly strong swordsman unit throughout the whole game, can stand up to Romans and Celts. So really worth getting this if you can. But of course, like I say, it depends a lot on the Romans themselves. So if you, I mean, it doesn't matter too much if you don't get this because you've still got your Thorakitai and you'll have AOR units available to you as well that can stand up to the Agira Speeders. But if Rome does conquer those five settlements in Greece, go and fight them five times. And yeah, you're going to get a really, really strong unit. Now on to a classic faction, guys. One that many people love, and that is Sparta. So guys, Sparta has a very powerful reform for its roster. So you do want to make sure that you've done this by the turn requirement. But it is here as follows. After the success of Alexander and his successors, to which the Greek city-states found no answer, the latter began to consider to retrain their hoplites to fight as Macedonian-style pikemen. The number of homoioi had fallen to a mere 700 by the middle of the 3rd century BC, a number so small that it made an effective Macedonian phalanx with its depth of 12 or 16 ranks almost impossible. To solve the lack of manpower, Cleomenes had 2,000 members of the lower strata of Spartan society, some of them former citizens, hypomaenes, enfranchised along with 2,000 or 2,500 perioikoi and mercenaries. They received the social status of Neodamodeus <laughs> new citizens. Uh, most of them were equipped as Macedonian phalangites, though Ray speculates that some of the Spartiates and other hoplites retrained their traditional uh, equipment. So this is a really big reform, guys. And you have to be at least 49 turns into the game. And you have to have fought at least... 15 battles against the Antigonids. So by the time you get to turn 49, guys, 
make sure you have fought 15 battles against the Antigonids and you will get this lovely reform. So the new units you get will be the Uzonoi, the sort of Peltast or the, um, yeah, the uh, um, Skirmisher unit, the Perioikoi Phalangites, which are decent, but the Neodamodeus Phalangites, which are really good. And the Bodyguard becomes a cavalry unit now rather than the infantry. So you're not going to be struggling for cavalry quite as much. You still will be struggling for cavalry because, <laughs> of course, the Spartan cavalry is trash. But yeah, your Bodyguard cavalry is eventually going to be up to snub. But you will lose the Spartan Hoplites and the Perioikoi Hoplites as well because they've retrained as Phalangites, guys. So yeah, a really big reform for Sparta. Make sure you've fought those 15 battles against the Antigonids when you get there. So let's move on to our penultimate nation, guys. The nation of Syracuse. So Syracuse, guys, has a couple of reforms. And they are quite interesting. As Syracuse, you do have a decently strong roster early on. Um... So these just add to that roster and give you a bit more firepower, especially against the Romans. So let's talk about the Syracusan reforms number one. Basilius, ruler of Sicilia, first citizen of Syracuse, the queen of all cities. You have brought wealth and happiness to your people. You have restored the temples and pacified the land. Now the time has come to conquer beyond Sicily and retake what the mighty Dionysius once called, once ruled, the ancient valleys and bountiful coasts of Italia. For this enterprise, we have retrained our cavalry to bear the big Thuria shield, and we have re-equipped some of our Theroperoi foot soldiers with heavier armor. These new units will make our army even more powerful. May Apollo guide us to victory. Syracuse forever. So with this reforms guys you get one really good unit which is the thoracitae and you get the theroporoi cavalry as well or the thoriophoroi cavalry shall i say uh, but to do this all you have to do is fight 20 battles which you'll do pretty quickly in the campaign maybe 30 turns in or something so yeah a good good reform for you early game there as well on to uh, reform number two which is a bit um, of a cool one. I do really like the requirements for this one. So, here it goes. Archon, Stratahos Autocrator, Basilius, the people of Syracuse praise you. You have been a great benefactor for our city and this island, both in peace and war. You have evinced your divine qualities as leader. Now, the newest gift of the Sicoliotes has arrived. Thanks to your generous funding of our military instructors, our hoplites have learned how to fight on horseback. So, with this one, guys, you need to own the whole of Sicily. So, every single one of the regions, which is as follows. Syracuse, Catane, Leontinoi, Leontinoi, Camarina, Tauromenion, Tandaris, Messena, Enna, Maitistratum, Acragas, Panormus, Sergesta, Eryx, Lilibium, Selinus, and Melite. So all of those regions. So it's not too many. And it will bring you at war with Carthage and Rome, however. So it is a scary endeavor to do that. But it is a quite a good reform nonetheless. Because you get the Espidophoro. So you just get a boost to your cavalry if you do this one. So let's move on to our final faction, guys. And it is the faction of Selge. They actually now get reforms, which is really cool as well. So for the AI, or if you want to play as Selge, uh, I will do a video on how to do that later down the line. So let's move on to those boys. So Selge actually has two reforms, guys. And the first one is as follows. Esteemed nobles of Selge, hear me out. We stand here on our beautiful plain in the Pisidian Mountains. Independent, strong, and unmatched in bravery. For generations, we have fought in the way of our forefathers. But the arrival of the horrible Galatians in Asia has changed much. We should not rest on our laurels like our Spartan ancestors now do. 
but rather embrace the new and adopt the oval shield of the Galatians, so that Selgian soldiers shall prevail forevermore. For Selge and for Pisidia. So with this reforms, all you have to do is get to 30 turns and you get the Theroporoi or the Thuriophoroi, uh, which is good, uh, which is really cool. And you get those boys for Selge. So you get a Greek unit for these boys. So on to reform number two, esteemed council of Selge. Today is a glorious day. Our officers have worked hard to make this day reality. And now here in front of you stand our first riders who can fight with a hoplite shield from horseback. Selected as a Phoebes when they were, st when they were still young, they are now some of Pisidia's most renowned warriors and they will terribly strike the enemy from their mounts. Protected by the great Greek round shield, they can deflect any missile the enemy can come up with. Selge is glorious. Yes, of course, glorious. Um, and with these, all you have to do is fight 20 battles and you get the Espido Foroi for the Selge as well. So that's really cool. So that was all the reforms, guys, for all the factions. And bear in mind that this treatment of reforms will happen to all the other factions in the future when they get remastered as well. So don't worry about Rome, all that sort of thing. They will have plenty of this depth going into them when they get remastered, of course, which isn't quite yet. That comes with 0.7 and then all the other factions after it. So this is just for the Hellenistic and Greek factions like we've said, which is really, really cool. Well, I hope you've enjoyed that. Remember, guys, bookmark this video so that you know to come back to it when you get playing, so you know exactly how to trigger the reforms you want and what units you're going to get from that as well. But thank you very much for watching, guys. It's been a pleasure as always. Please do like and subscribe. It really does help the channel out. And I will see you all again on the next video.